This is the Blood Red Podcast from the Liverpool Echo. Hello and welcome to the latest edition of the Blood Red Podcast from the Liverpool Echo. I'm Matt Addison with Ian Doyle, Joe Rimmer and David Lynch alongside me for this one with an exciting topic to get into very shortly. Liverpool have announced their first signing of this summer, so we'll be assessing how Ibrahim Ekanate will fit in, what he might bring to the table and plenty more, as well as taking a look at what else Liverpool might have to do in the summer before the start of next season. Doyley, I'll come to you first. Liverpool fans will be really excited about this one. It's a position they desperately needed to strengthen. and They've not messed about. They've just gone in, paid it and got it done. Yeah, now they've got about 15,000 centre-backs, which is uh, funny. Um, but yeah, that was a position, obviously, that the, the, they'd the drawn up the five-strong shortlist, hadn't they? Uh, which Canati was always the, the number one choice. And I think while there was obviously a lot of stories earlier in the month and last month about the deal being done, I don't think it was ever that quite straightforward. I think uh, Leipzig were quite keen on having the... Uh, everybody knew about the release fee, which is about uh, £36 million. I think they wanted it paid up front rather than instalments. And Liverpool, you would imagine, were probably waiting to see whether they qualify for the Champions League or not. And once they knew that that kind of funds were guaranteed, I suspect that kind of made them make the move straight away. We know Jurgen Klopp uh, from the past, his experiences is that he likes players being in first thing. If he likes them the start of uh, the start of the summer when they start training again, that's something that he wasn't afforded last season. Obviously, with Jota and um, Jota and Thiago Simicast, slightly uh, he, he was, but. It was such a strange summer last year anyway that it was difficult for anybody coming in. But that's not the case this season, this summer. Um, that'll be the first, and as we're going to get on to in a bit, there'll be, uh, I would imagine, a few more a few more changes. But, you know, the, the interesting thing for me is that what Klopp said uh, in his little press release after the uh, announcement was made is that he's a player for now who can play straight away. But read between the lines, I suspect that if he doesn't have to, I don't think he'd really want to play him straight away. I think, you know, you, you look at... You know, Virgil van Dijk, Joe Gomez, uh, Joel Matip, they'll all be, at least you'd like to think one of them will be available for the start of the season. And then you've still got Nat Phillips, you've still got uh, Reese Williams, who, who've come on and both of their reputations over the past uh, couple of months. And you've still got Ben Davis, who uh, still exists. You know, he posted something on Instagram yesterday, didn't he, saying, look, I'm, I'm looking forward to the new season's been injured. What a surprise that was. Um but yeah, I do think that he'll be a given time to, you know, he's only 22 Canati. I think he'll be given time to, to learn the Klopp ways, as as we've seen with many a player. But you know, as Klopp said, he, if he needs to play, he'll play straight away. So it will be, the, the, while he's like, I think he's something like the eighth or seventh highest, if the transfer goes through, the, you know, the seventh, I think, most expensive player in Liverpool's history. I don't think there's going to be a lot of pressure on him because of his age and because of the fact that, you know, Liverpool do already have those kind of options at centre-back. From what we've seen of him, Joe, I mean, he, he seems to be a player, certainly Jurgen Klopp, after the, the signing was announced, has said, you know, he's quick, he's strong, he's good in the air, he's good on the ball. He seems to tick a lot of boxes that you need for a Liverpool centre-back. And after a season like this one, it's going to be nice to have that option there to be able to play in the same style of play. And that's not to take anything away from Nat Phillips and, and the rest of the players who've stepped in, but this is very much a Liverpool player. That's exactly, exactly it. You know, um, he's got all those physical attributes, doesn't he? Um, you know, I think Liverpool will want to play that high line that was so successful for them um, a couple of years back, and he will be a big part of that when he does play. So, and of course, they'll want someone who's airily dominant. Um, obviously, Matt Phillips was that when he came in, but Liverpool, for a, a large portion of last season, seems to miss that. So, you know, he does tick a lot of boxes. Um, you know, I won't, I'll be honest, I don't know too much about him, don't watch Leipzig every week, but. Um, you know, you look at his age and his profile, and um, you know, and his fee, and I think everything comes together to make quite a good deal for Liverpool. And as Doyle says, I mean, they, they've got so many good options at centre half, provided all these players stay fit. That you know, they're going to have to come up with a bit of a plan as to what to do with certain players now. You know, does Nat Phillips stay at Liverpool? Um, he's he's had a good move if he does move on. If not, then he's a good option to have. Um, Reese Williams, I'm sure they'll look for a, the right loan for him. And then Ben Davis, um, you know, they'll have to decide what happens next for him. So Liverpool have got a wealth of options when players are fit. And it'll be interesting to see who, when everyone's fit and firing, who he goes with. Um, obviously, Van Dijk and Gomez. Let's not forget about Gomez. They, they forged a really, really good partnership when, um, when Liverpool won the league and when Liverpool won the Champions League. Joel Matip was a big part of both of those campaigns as well. So, um, yeah, a really good sign. I really like it when Liverpool do business early. I think it, it's a good sign that they, 
you know, they've been ready to go. And yeah, I think it'll be a big boost for Liverpool. You know, they've now got a lot of options in an area that was devastated last season. So it's um it could be really important and can't wait to see him play now. Um, you know, very excited about him and Liverpool have done seems to do some good business. He's actually unbeaten in his last 28 starts for Leipzig, apparently, David. It's sort of one of those things that maybe is sort of stretched out over a longer period of time. We'll come back to the sort of injury history of the player shortly. But he's very much the future, but he's very much someone who can come in now, as Jurgen Klopp said as well. Yeah, I, I didn't know that stat at all. That's that's really surprising and, and, and encouraging, I suppose. And, you know, I think Liverpool have made the point, really, that for, for a player of his age, he... he even though he's had injuries and he, he hasn't, you know, maybe played as much football as Leipzig would have liked, um, he still played a lot of football for for a centre half of his age at, at 22 years old, still really experienced, um, you know, and, and has obviously done very well if that's if that's his record there. Um, it just, yeah, it just looks a, a really hugely talented young player, but with 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 huge potential, but someone who you could rely on if you know. So you get to the start of the season and Joe Matip and, and Joe Gomez aren't quite right, then you know you wouldn't have any sort of qualms about throwing him straight into the mix because he's got a great deal of experience behind him. So, you know, it, it's going to be a test for him in terms of adapting to a new league. I think there are differences between the Bundesliga and, and the Premier League that, that maybe gets underplayed a little bit at times. I think particularly for, for centre-halves in terms of, um, you know, aerial challenges coming into the Premier League are expected to, to make more and, and possibly... A lot of the centre halves that have come from the Bundesliga have tended to win less, so it's you know there are a lot more, uh, for want of a better word, grocks in this league in terms of big big centre forwards who will give you uh, who will give you give you trouble. So um, you know that that will be something to think about. But he's but he's young, his time on his side, and and like we said already, has has learned a lot in his short footballing career. So yeah, really exciting sign on the on the face of it. Yeah, certainly that will be something for him to get used to. I mean, I'm pretty sure I'm right in saying that Ozan Kabak's numbers have dropped off significantly since he's come to England, but obviously it's a, a smaller sample size in that regard as well. But uh, just to, to touch in on the uh, the injuries of the player, Donny, I mean, he's had lots of, of big injuries in his career so far, considering the, the sort of fact he's only just turned 22 this week. But it's a slightly different situation, say, to a, a Joel Matip, for example, who has lots of little injuries that he can't seem to get over. These are very much unfortunate. And I think it's important to point out that Liverpool wouldn't have done this deal if they weren't 100% convinced that the medicals were the right thing for the player. I think I think before I answer that, we just need to go back to the word grox, which uh, <laughs> is a word that I haven't heard in a very long time. And um, actually means something else where I'm from. So um, yeah, you don't oh, really, you don't really want to be what you don't want to be one of those. Let's put it that way. Um, but yeah, the, the the injury concerns. I was actually had a look at it before. I think he only started 14 Bundesliga games in two the last two seasons. So. In that sense, that's not particularly great. The whole, almost all of last season, he was out with an injury. Um, but this season, he had got an ankle injury around Christmas, or so just before that. But he's actually been available since February, since the start of February. So what's that? February, March, April, May. He's been available for the last four months. He's just not been getting in the team as often because, you know, as, as I probably mentioned, his age. And also, I suspect Leipzig perhaps knew he was on his way anyway regardless of where he was going to at the end of the season. So I don't know whether that played a part. But, but, but of course, Leipzig had... Uh, What's the lad who's gone to Bayern Munich whose name I can never pronounce? Up on Meccano. Yeah, him. Yeah, well, it, it's interesting, isn't it? That? But two of the main centre-backs have now gone. I wouldn't be surprised if Kabak ended up at Leipzig, by the yeah. way. That, that would make a bit of sense. But, you know, look at his injuries. Yeah, Liverpool, you would think that you have to put a certain amount of trust in, in what they've discovered or their own research because there's absolutely no way they'd spend £36 million up front on an injury-prone centre-back to fill a position where everybody is injury-prone, it would just make absolutely zero sense. So, you know, as much as people will question all aspects of transfer deals, no matter what the club, we think we have to give Liverpool a certain amount of, you know, credits or, or you know, basically say, look, they must know what they're doing here. So we have to go along with that. But it, it will be a slight concern because he's simply not played the same same amount of football as almost everybody else over the last two seasons. That may end up being a, to benefit long further along in his career. But in the short term, it may be a bit of an issue. But, you know, he'll be playing for, presumably playing for France against, uh, I think it's Holland, isn't it, in the under-21 championship on Monday, um, which rather unhelpfully Sky are not showing. So they've got the other game on at that time. So I'm not sure where you're going to be able to find see that. But that would have been a chance to, to, for everybody to watch him play because, you know, like Joe, I must admit, 
I've probably seen him play, but I don't remember. <laughs> I think, Joe, the, the fact that he's topped this five-man shortlist for Liverpool says a lot, to me at least, about what happened in January. Maybe we weren't best pleased with what Liverpool did. They left it late. They didn't necessarily get the right players in in January. But do you think this was maybe the reason why, that maybe they had one eye on Canate, but they knew that they couldn't do that mid-season? Absolutely, yeah. I think that they obviously went for um, Kalata Carr from Marseille uh, in January. And, and look, yeah, Liverpool don't like to, you know, they're, they're quite open about this. They, and Klopp doesn't like it. They don't like to just make signings for the sake of it. And when they're short in a position, they don't want to sign a short-term player when they can they can get a long-term player further down the line. So, you know, I, I actually think, I don't think Liverpool were going to sign up for half in January until Matthew got injured. And then when he did, you know, I actually think they, they reacted pretty well to get Kabak and, you know, even Davis. I know he's not played the game, but even if Liverpool sell him this summer, they'll get more for him than they paid. So I think Liverpool did some good business in January, to be fair to them, you know, in the, in the time constraints and everything to get those sorts of deals off um, over the line, I thought was quite impressive. And then they've moved quickly to get this one and obviously been working on it for a number of months. So, you know, yeah, you're right. I mean, Liverpool probably did have one eye on Canato. They, I think they knew last summer that they needed the centre half when they let um, Deja Love and Gargan will have, will have been planning, um, and obviously the injuries sort of made that look a little bit worse. But yeah, I think I think it's, it's quite good for Liverpool. It's clever; they've moved quickly, um, and I think as well, whilst everyone's been concentrating on the upper Mercado, uh, Liverpool have obviously been watching Kanate, and and he's the one that they've wanted. And you know, I think Umpa Mercado had a similar release clause, didn't he? Um, to Canate because he went to, to Bayern Munich for around the same price and Liverpool didn't get involved there and, and I've obviously been watching Canate so yeah um, it, I, I just think it's the perfect sort of age range for them um, you know they, they didn't want to sign they didn't want to sign older players Liverpool don't do that um, and I, I, I think he's you know it, make, it makes the balance of the four centre arse pretty good because Gomez is a touch older and then you've got two older more experienced players in Van Dijk and, and Matter, and then two younger guys in, in Gomez and, and, and Canate so you know I think they've got a really nice balance and different types of centre halves there so um, be interested to see how it all fits together next season is there, is there any concern over Liverpool's record of buying players from the Red Bull stable because <laughs> I'm thinking of no seriously I'm thinking of you know Cater hasn't quite Call fire, even though no one doubts his talent, and you know if he if he wasn't so injury prone, I think he'd have played an awful lot more. And then you've got Minamino, who hasn't that hasn't quite worked either. Any concerns there? Well, Anyone? Theo, Theo has written a piece saying this, and I, I I was reading through it before. I said to him, we can't exactly stick out a piece saying Canate could fail just just before he signed. So, but but we did talk about it. So it's, it might be more of a case of luck, you know, Minamino. With the best one in the world, it was a good price. Didn't quite have the, well, doesn't quite have the physical attributes in my mind um, to, to to fit perfectly in the Premier League. Um, and then Katie, you could sort of argue similar. Uh, obviously, has ability. And but then if you look at another player who's been through that way with through the Red Bull system in, in Madde, you know, he had obviously had the years at Southampton, but took has taken to the Premier League perfectly. So. You know, Canate obviously has the physical attributes, so I think that probably is on the side there. And, um, you know, I, I wouldn't worry too much about that. You know, I, I think we can see that Cater is a, is a decent player. It just hasn't come together for him. And Minamino, to me, was just a, you know, a sort of no-brainer, give it a go, £7 million sign. In terms of the pecking order next season, David, how do you think it's starting to shape up? We know that Van Dijk will be number one, but then, as we said before, there's quite a few other options to kind of slot in. I suppose you don't have to have a, a set one, two, three, four, but there is some decisions to be made, pro probably in the bigger games, to be honest, in terms of, of which two it is or, or which one it is alongside Van Dijk. Yeah, I think that I think there will be a, a pecking order just on the basis that you know Jurgen Klopp has spoken about it a lot this season. Is you know the lack of consistency at the back has been Liverpool's biggest problem. You know he likes to if the centre halves are available to him to to have a solid two who would start the majority of the Premier League and Champions League games. Um, in in terms of of who that's going to be, I think it's really really difficult to say. I think you know going into this season, it was a case of you know Van Dijk obviously is your first nailed on, and then have a look at Matip and Gomez's fitness and where they're up to in, at the end of pre-season and, and sort of make a judgment call on that. 
You throw Canati into the mix this time around, I think it becomes even more difficult. You know, Gomez and Matic, we just don't know whether they're going to get those little niggles that you get on your way back from a long-term injury. Obviously, the same, the same goes for Virgil as well. Um, and with Canate, I think he's got the added challenge of, like I said earlier, adapting to a new league and a new sort of intensity. But also, there's a, there's a possibility as, as well as obviously he's, he's going to be in the under twenty one Euros. But there's every possibility I, I think that he could be called up to the Olympics uh, this summer. Which, if if that is the case, if he was part of France's team for that, then it would obviously delay his, his pre or disrupt his preseason entirely. Which would be a big period for him to sort of establish himself, wouldn't it? So. Um, I think it's really, really difficult to call uh, those those three who would be the, the number one partner to Van Dijk. I think it's going to be one of the sort of interesting subplots of pre-season, really, seeing how, how Jurgen Klopp settles on that. Because, you know, as has been mentioned earlier, Matip won the Champions League, big part of that running. Gomez, a, a virtual ever-present in a season where Liverpool absolutely walked the Premier League. And then Canate, obviously, they think he's brilliant because they've, they've just signed him for, for quite a lot of money. So... A uh, really, really interesting battle. I think the only, the only guarantee, like you say, is is Virgil being in there. He is primarily Doyle a centre back, but he can play right back as well. Do you think that's possibly come into Liverpool's thinking? In that we haven't seen a great deal of Nico Williams, for example. We might see more of him next season, but the fact that Canate can play more than one role possibly is in his favour as well. No. <laughs> Fair <laughs> no, it's my end, end the well. podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, just going, going back to Van Dyke and Gomez, I think Lynch makes the good point. Anyone who expects them to come in and play a full season can forget it. I think if the pair of them, if each of them plays, is available for half the games next season, I think that's good going because I don't think you can, certainly with Gomez, I don't think you can kind of overestimate or how serious an injury he suffered. It's such a fiddly one as well. Van Dijk's slightly different. In fact, obviously a lot more is known about cruciate ligament injuries, but I'd still be, you know, I can't see Liverpool rushing him straight back in, play all the games. So I think if you've got Canate, you will have one of Phillips and Williams. One of them will still be there as far as I'm concerned because then you, because they're not going to like get rid of like two or three of them or whatever, just just because they've signed one, then suddenly one player gets injured and they're right back where they started again. So I can't see that happening. That's obviously that's provided the players actually want to stay. And I think that's something that you know later on in this summer, certainly as Lynchy said, you get towards the transfer deadline and and if Phillips or you know has played like one game in the warm ups and then realizes he's probably not going to be playing, he may look to to move on. But that's a long way, long way down the line. An awful lot of football has to be you know played before then. But I don't think Canati being able to play right back has had any influence on this to the point where I didn't even know he could play right back until he just mentioned it. So I think that's um, that something that's happened a lot because that's that's yeah. news to me as well. To be honest, <laughs> Are you sure he's I not mean, the right player here, Matt? <laughs> no, he, he can definitely play right back. Speaking to to Guido Schaefer, who is uh, a journalist over in Leipzig, we've uh, done a podcast with him a few months back, and that was one of the things that he picked out that he thought might sort of come into it for Jurgen Klopp. Obviously, we know he likes players that can play in more than one role, but. Uh, I mean, yeah, let's be honest, he's not played a huge amount at centre-back, has he, for the last two seasons? So he's probably not played a huge amount at right-back either, but certainly that is something he can I do. I don't think it's going to be like Brendan Rodgers and four left-backs playing across the... Sorry, four centre-backs playing across the... the <laughs> Kenny Dalglish did that a few times oh. as well, so I don't think we're going to be going from one extreme to the other, to be honest. Imagine that, to get Santa centre-back playing in right-back. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, anyway, in terms of Nat Phillips, fifth choice joke going into next season, as it stands, you'd imagine, it's probably on his sort of choice as to whether he wants to, to stay or not, whether he wants to be fifth choice, whether he wants to move on, it's probably up to him, isn't it? Yeah, that'll be it, I think. I think, um, as Doyle said, I can't can't see them selling all those those backup players, if you like, in, in uh, Phillips, uh, Williams and Davis. Um, they're going to have to keep one of them around for emergencies, but... For Phillips, he's the older of the, the. Well, actually, Davis might be the oldest of the lot. I can't probably close. Davis, him, is, Davis is the oldest. Davis, yeah, Davis the oldest. But but Davis hasn't really had a chance to get his Liverpool career off the ground. So so Phillips might be the one that says, you know what, you know, I need to go and, you know, I've had a taste for football now. I need to go and play more regular games. And you wouldn't blame him, would you? Um, he was obviously close to, to a move last year. And I think Liverpool will probably get all right money for him. Um, I, I, I think he'd probably move on this summer. I think it makes sense for him. I think it doesn't make sense for him to stay at the another six months or a season and, and not play. I think he should strike now while he's, his stock is high and, and, and get a good move and he, he deserve it. Um, you know, I think 
there'll be teams, you know, I was watching the, when he scored in the Burnley game the other day, you think he probably couldn't do worse than go and play for Burnley and they could do worse and get someone like him. You know, I think he'd fit in there quite well. So, yeah, I, th- I think it'll probably be on him, but I, I, I suspect he'll leave Liverpool this summer um, just because now is the, the right time for him to get a move. Yeah, I completely agree. I think it's uh, the right time to get the most amount of money we've seen Liverpool maybe not do that in the past and maybe live to regret it. But uh, Lynchy, there's other positions as well. Obviously, Ibrahima Kanate sorts out probably the centre-back situation. We don't expect Liverpool to get another one in necessarily, but there are other areas of the pitch that could do with strengthening. What do you think are the priorities after Kanate? Well, I, th- I think obviously the, the forward areas, it, it, you know, Liverpool are very much saying at the moment that, that it's a case of, you know, we're, we're happy with we've got what we've got in, in other positions. But I think in the forward areas, there's an acknowledgement that the likes of Divock Origi and Shakiri are, are probably going to push the moves away and, and there's going to be a decent amount of interest in them this summer. Um, you know, players like Harry Wilson, for example, as well, who, who's been out on the loan, is, is very likely to move on. So that that could you leave Liverpool a little bit short in those forward areas. And I think that, that planning in terms of, of moving on from this front three eventually, that you know, I, I don't believe all the, the hype that's been around them this season in terms of saying that they're finished. But, you know, in terms of that forward planning and putting players in place who are, are going to succeed them, like Jota, for example, I think that, you know, if Origi and Shakiri move on, uh, Minamino is another, by the way, see what his future holds. But if think of a, a decent offer came in, that Liverpool would have a look at that. Um, and if they if they move on, then that's an opportunity, isn't it, to get a, a, another sort of jotter in, whether that's someone who plays off the right in Mo Salah's position or maybe someone in a possibly a centre-forward position, I suppose, if you've got Harvey Elliott coming back into the fold. So, um, yeah, it's, I, I think that, that definitely needs strengthening. And then in midfield, again, you know, Liverpool suggesting that they're happy with what they got. I, I, I'm not quite so sure about that. Um, you know, there's there's been links to Pesuma, who I think is a great player and, and someone Liverpool should really be looking at. But if not, you know, I still think there is there's a need for for someone in there in that central midfield position because you know James Milner is is great and we probably say this every summer he's he's another year older. But you know, at some point that's probably going to tell. Um, Jordan Henderson has had you know he has picked up the odd injury hasn't he in the last few years and and Naby Keita and, and not say Chamberlain we know what their injury troubles have been like as well so. You know, not not a great deal of hugely reliable options in central midfield. So I, I do think sort of Liverpool's approach should be this summer is obviously some players will move on and, and, and some players maybe you don't expect if, if decent offers come in. But I do think it should be a case of looking at one in defence, one in midfield and, and one in attack, regardless of what goes on. And I think if they're solid options, I think this, this squad would be well placed to, to challenge again next season. I think in terms of holes, Doyle, I think Gini Wijnaldum averaged over five seasons just over 47 appearances for Liverpool. That's a pretty big gap to try and fill without a signing, isn't it? I mean, are they not just risking the same sort of thing as last season where they didn't give themselves enough centre-backs if they don't bring someone in to bring in Wijnaldum? It could be a similar situation in midfield. Well, not really, to be honest. Sorry to keep on disagreeing with you. Um, but, (laughs) but, But you look at it and you go, well, they're quite obviously the sign this Canate because they do not want a position where Fabinho's playing centre back again. So you've got in midfield in his position, you can have either Henderson or Fabinho can play that defensive role. And then as for the rest, and well, Milner could do it as well, I suppose. But as for the rest, you've still got we've meant, we haven't even mentioned Curtis Jones yet, who you know last last season or the season yeah. just finished is when Klopp wanted to have some fun with him. And, and we haven't mentioned Thiago. So that's, you know, they signed him for 20 odd million and we saw what he did in the last couple of weeks of the season. So that's still what Milner, Fabinho, Henderson, uh, Jones, Thiago, Oxley, Chamberlain, Cater. So that's seven players for three positions. So if they didn't sign anybody, fair enough. The problem he's got is that none of them can do what Juan Eldon does, which is basically everything. And when you lose Juan Eldon, you're not just losing one player, you're using a player who can play in all of those three positions and somebody's had five years getting used to it. And he's somebody, as you say, he never gets injured. And that's the big thing. All of those other ones, all of those other players we've just mentioned have been injured for significant periods this season alone, let alone any other seasons before that. When Eldon was always there, that's why, you know, look at Mane, Firmino and Salah. They're always there. You know, that 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 cannot be, you know, Trent, less, less to be Trent, but Robertson as well. That, that cannot be, you know, say overstated enough that the best thing a, fo- best thing a good footballer can be is available. Because if he can't play, he may as well have just been me. You know what any of us for you know we'd be as much use playing for liverpool because we can't so 
there is that. I think with <laughs> oh, sorry, Lynch. Yeah, sorry to break it to you there, but uh, I don't I was going to say I'm more, more used to you, I reckon. <laughs> 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 I'm retired. I'm retired. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah. I mean, personally speaking, personally speaking, having said all of that, I'd sign a midfielder as well because I think that they have to start looking at looking ahead. I think you can't rely on Kate and Oxide Chamberlain forever. I think if one of those two did they get a good offer for one of those two, I think they might go. I think Henderson is now moving towards his not every you know one game a week kind of stage of his career. Milner, this will probably be his last season for his own sake, surely. Um, and you don't want to put too much pressure on Jones. And Thiago is always going to be around about the team but he'll need a rest at some point but if they could get someone like I mean I really like Tielemans at Leicester and he's someone who's a little bit like Juan Alvin the fact that he can play in all the positions and you saw what he did in the FA Cup final but he can also play in a kind of a defensive role which Juan Alvin it wasn't his favourite role but he could do it I mean at Liverpool is there, is there a better player in the Premier League or well was a better player in the Premier League than Juan Alvin at shielding the ball I mean, he did it at the, I think there was, there was some spell against Crystal Palace in the last game of the season where Liverpool were messing about with, at the back, went out to the wing and went, Alden, went, and went, went and got it. And he just basically spent the next 30 seconds fending off about 15 challenges and then passed the ball and then the, the trouble was away. And I don't think, again, that's another talent that he's got. So Liverpool will miss him. Uh, I think Liverpool should perhaps, if they can get a player who's of near enough that standard or can become that good, then, because don't forget when Alden, the one album that left is way better than the one album that joined. That's the other thing as well. And I think, again, with Canate, I think that's if they can sign somebody in that age range or a little bit older, like Jota as well. Well, was Jota when he signed 24, 23? You know, he's not particularly, not particularly old. I think they're the kind of players that Liverpool look to sign if they can get a 23, 24 year old midfielder and a 23, 24 year old. I would say central striker. I know that I agree with Lynchy that they'll probably, if they're going to bring someone in, they might look at the right wing or someone who can play in both positions. But I'd be looking for someone who can play down the middle. But those kind of age range is, is what they should be looking at. That's more what I meant, Joe, in terms of needing a one Alden replacement. Obviously, you've got Cater, you've got Chamberlain, you've got all of these players, but you haven't almost really got them because quite often they're not there. One Alden obviously was for, for every single match. Yeah, th that's it. I mean, I agree with the guys. I think both of them, you know, I think Liverpool need both of those positions, midfield and, and forward. But as you say, you know, midfield's a funny one because they do appear to have lots of options. But, you know, Curtis Jones is still very young. And even though, I, you know, he's still, he'll have a bigger and bigger role in years to come. Um, I still think he's very, very young to be to be sort of putting all your hopes on him to start a lot of games like Wayne Arden does. And then, you know, we've seen... Jordan Henderson does, you know, pick up injuries now, and then we've seen Cater and Oxide Chamberlain not being available for large periods of time. So yeah, I think they do need a midfielder, like Doyle says, you know, someone in that age range around twenty-four years old that can sort of, you know, grow at Liverpool. Um, but I suspect they won't sign anyone until they they start selling players. I think Liverpool now have got a lot of players like Oxide Chamberlain, like Cater, um, <coughs> like like Shakiri or Origi. So many players now that. I think they need to find new homes for, need to clear some space on the wage bill. Um, they've obviously got a very big wage bill. I just need to get some funds back into the club. Um, you know, you don't, Liverpool don't like to stockpile players and I don't think they'll like to go into the season with more players than they, they sort of ended the season with. So I think, I think they need to find homes for them. So I think, I suspect they get Canati in because they needed a centre half badly. And then I think, once they move on a couple, then we'll start seeing the, the ball start rolling in terms of other positions. I don't think people should expect a midfielder to arrive next week and a striker the week after. Um, certainly up front. I certainly think that they won't do anything up front with the Shakiri and the Rigi, um, a fine new clubs. Um, and it'd be interesting as well because we know that Liverpool don't they don't sell players on the cheap, do they? So, you know, someone like a Rigi, uh, Doyle, obviously you did that piece today looking at how much they could get for certain players and, you know, I, th I think it's going to be a really interesting market this summer because obviously last year was, you know, a lot slower. And I, I don't really think that this year is going to be, you know, I don't think you're going to see massive fees this year. Clubs have still got that hangover from the pandemic and the club finances. So, you know, I think Liverpool are going to have to feel their way into the market with some of these players. And, you know, whether they get the 15, 20 million for certain players like Origi, Shakiri, Gurich, people like that that perhaps they would have wanted in the past. I don't know. You know, Harry Wilson, we talked about sort of 10 to 12 million for Harry Wilson, but are you going to get that now? 
you know, I, I, I just don't know. I just don't know. So, and then that will, you know, once once Liverpool work that out, I think that will sort of impact on who they bring in. So, um, you know, I think from then Liverpool will be concentrating on outgoings before they start buying more players. I think it I almost think, uh, depends. Just to come in, sorry, go on, oh, go sorry, go on, go on. Matt. Just to come in on that, I just think we, there was. I saw a little bit of debate on on social media earlier about about the prices Liverpool were setting for, say, someone like Harry Harry Wilson. You know, Liverpool maybe saying they'd want around fifteen million for him, and I, I agree, maybe that is a little unrealistic. But I do, I do think you know there is going to be a slight adjustment in this this market, even though there's the pandemic in, um, effect in it, in terms of. Just an acknowledgement that, that there's no broadcasting rebate this time around. Uh, that that you know everything going well and, and as planned, then then fans should be back next season. So that's an immediate boost to revenues. And I think, you know, with, with someone like Harry Wilson, okay, maybe 15 million is pushing it. But if you were to dip below 12 million for a, for a player like that, someone who, who's his age, who's still really young, got so many years ahead of him, uh, is a full international and, and really you know lower Premier League heart. Uh, half of the table and, and, and higher up in the championship has really like repeatedly shown his, his quality at that level. I just think, you know, if you, if you start dipping below 12 million, I think that gets a little bit ridiculous really in terms of, I, I just don't think Liverpool, you know, I think, think they may have to sort of soften the stance with some of the fees, you know, a Rigi for 20 now does seem ambitious, but someone like, someone like Harry Wilson, I think with his age profile and his quality, I, I don't think they should be, you know, dipping below 12. And I think they could reasonably expect to, to hold out for that this summer and, and that, you know, getting fees like that in, it would be a big contribution to to what they do later in the market because I completely agree with Joe that I think they will, they'll move a few on and then and then start doing the rest of the business. I think it's almost going to take one or two of these deals to happen, isn't it, Donny, for then that market to be set. If one or two other clubs make those deals, maybe then Liverpool go, well, if that's the going rate for him, you can then compare it. But until that happens, we just don't know what that level is. No, it is interesting because then, you know, we're not really expecting loads of players to move, but, but in the end, they will do because that's just what clubs do and what footballers do. They just can't help themselves. They just they just love it, which is good for us. Good for us, to be fair. Um, especially when it happens on your day off. It's even better then. Um, but yeah, I mean, the thing is, Gruwich, Gruwich played in the Champions League quarter final. You know what I mean? So, and he finished second in the Portuguese league. So, you'd think that he's possibly. Him and Shakiri are the two that you could maybe get the most money for, especially when Shakiri nearly left uh, last October, wasn't it? So there'll be players interested in them. Origi, Origi, I mean, there will be clubs interested. It's whether he wants to go because it's going wherever he goes, there'll be a step down from Liverpool. So he'll want to go somewhere where he's going to be playing. Um, and you'd imagine he would be. So, but what would you get for him? 12 million, possibly? I mean, if it had been this time last year, you know, you're looking at, as you said, as Lynch was saying, you're looking at 20. There are other players that are getting towards the end of the contracts, like Carrius. You forget about him. You know Ben Woodburn. He's you know he's only got one year left as well, and he's he certainly deserved to play football somewhere because he he's you know he, he applied himself very well in the, the under twenty three level of the second half of the season when he came back off loan from Blackpool. So he deserves a move somewhere. And I don't think Liverpool will make it difficult for any of these players to go, but they will want to get some money for them. Um, but yeah, they, they'll. It is going to be a thing about who blinks first. You know, you just need one move, like one, say, I don't know, say Manchester City sell one of the squad players to somebody and then suddenly that's the figure and everyone just goes, right, that's the barometer. And it could work the other way where Liverpool get a massive fee for somebody they weren't expecting and then suddenly everybody else's fees go up. So that could work in their favour as well. But, you know, it is it is one where we're just going to have to wait and see and the transfer window doesn't even open until July the 1st officially. So, uh, great. <laughs> Just in terms of, of incomings, Joe, I mean, there's other considerations as well. There's the Olympics that we mentioned before. The African Cup of Nations, I think, is in January. So that's mid-season where Liverpool will lose a couple of players for, for two or three weeks. I think I'm right in saying that. There are other things to, to consider as well. They probably are going to have to get one or two players in just on that basis as well, aren't they? Possibly, yeah. I mean, the Olympics is one that you never even really think about, but there's a real possibility that Salah will go in it's the Olympics, isn't there? So, um, you know, it's quite easy to disregard, but yeah, Liverpool could, could end up losing players to the Olympics and then the African Cup of Nations and Salah's a big one that you think if he goes to both. Um, I don't know how that works and whether, you know, they will take Salah to both. It seems it seems like a stretch and they tend to seem to pick a certain player for one, don't they, and then not take him for the other. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, that is a consideration. Um, and again, certain injuries Liverpool had last season, they'll be desperate for players not to to overexert themselves. 
Um, I mean, what's the Olympics throughout August? Was it, is it? Yeah, late July, July into just, early yeah, August. August. Yeah. There's no point. Just leave it. I mean, like, why don't we just cancel <laughs> the Olympics? I, I, I was thinking to this myself the other day. You know, look at the Olympics. No one really cares about weightlifting, do they? So things like that. Um, yeah, I don't, I'd just do the 100 meter sprint and cancel the rest. I think that, what that about the 100 meter weightlifting sprints? Would you watch that? <laughs> no, no, I wouldn't. No, what if Salah was in the 100 meters? Would you, would you be all right with that? No, I'd rather not be. You could pull a hamstring because me, that's the whole point. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, yeah, I've forgotten about the Olympics for that. That isn't very good at all. Um, and then the African Cup of Nations is, um, I don't know, I always feel like. That season a couple of years ago when Liverpool lost Mane and then really suffered because the African Cup of Nations sort of, you know, hopefully they've learned the lessons from that. But they've got, you know, they've got other players there and that's why I think they will be bringing a forward as well because Salah will go on that one and, and Mane will go. So they'll have to have Jota and, and somebody else. So, yeah, um, it promises to be interesting on that front. Um, but Liverpool can't sign players with just the next sort of six months to a year in mind, can they? They have to sign them for a lot longer than that, so... There's lots of moving parts. I think uh, another moving part would be Harvey Elliott, David, as well as him to, to put into the equation. Obviously, you wouldn't want to put him up there as a Salah replacement for the, the period of time during the African African Cup of Nations or, or anything like that. You don't want to put that pressure on him, but he is going to probably get a bit of game time next season as well. Yeah, he's you know the, the player himself believes that he can he can come back to Liverpool after that that loan spell at Blackburn in, in, in challenge for a first team place. Not not necessarily a, a regular first team place, but he believes there's there's enough football that could be played at Anfield next season. Doesn't really want to go out on another loan. So I think that's a, it's an interesting scenario, isn't it? Because I think you know he he probably would get thrust into the squad in that position as the direct backup to Salah if if Shakiri goes because there's. You know, sort of similar players, aren't they? That that left-footed playmaker who, who likes to play out from the right-hand side. But um, so I think, yeah, I think that position is is open to him. I think that that makes it obvious why Liverpool need to need a forward, isn't it? Because you know you, you can't put that much pressure on a player as young as that, as good as he is, and he's such a huge talent. But I think you, you don't want to be putting him in a position where it's okay. Just keep our keep our season going in the absence of Mo Salah because that's just such a big ask but it's yeah the, the, there are games there for him certainly and you know someone I think Liverpool fans should be quite excited to see because I think he's really kicked on in this year I think the lo- you know the loan move to Blackburn wasn't initially in the plans if, if Shakiri had gone and the fact that he went there and did so well has just been a, a bit of a bonus for everyone so he you know he is ready to, to take on a bit more responsibility but but yeah that that sort of underlines doesn't it the importance of getting another forward in because say you know, you've got Jota there to, to maybe directly cover for the absence of Mane, but on that, that right hand side, you don't want to be putting it all on Harvey Elliott to cover to cover things off. So if you had another forward in with Jota, Firmino will still be around in the AFCON as well, and, and then Elliott dipping in and out. And, and Curtis Jones can even play off that left hand side as well, can't he, from time to time? So yeah, they'll, they'll, I think if they did bring that extra forward in, it would give them enough options to sort of get through that period. And, and like we said, they possibly need one anyway just to start planning for. A future without Salah, without Mane, without Firmino. So it's um, it, it might line up quite nicely and, and hopefully give a few opportunities to Elliot as well. Is Harvey Elliot the, the only one, Dodi, or do you think there might be one or two other youngsters coming through that maybe we might start to see a little bit of, probably in, in pre season and then maybe in the, the early cup rounds? What do you think I'm going to say now? <laughs> probably no. <laughs> uh, no, I don't. No, I. Maybe some of them may have been the match day squads for the League Cup, but other than that, I just I can't really see it to be honest. I mean, it's too early for them, isn't it? I mean, we've seen a lot of the under 18s, and, and a lot of the under 18s are end up playing for the under 23s. So I don't think they're quite ready for first team exposure just yet. Although, as I say, I wouldn't be surprised if one or two ended up in the squads for those League Cup games, possibly getting on the bench for Premier League games, FA Cup, you know, but well, Champions League, how many subs we allowed next season in the Champions League? About 20 or something. So we'll have to wait and see on that one. But no, I think Harvey Elliott is the one. And of course, he's had, as we just said, he's had a very good season at Championship, you know, which is one of the toughest leagues to play. In. And he's, he's not saying he's made it look easy, but he's played nearly every game. And he's ended up with, I think it was second in terms of assists. I think it was second or third. So, Blackburn loved him and they'd love to take him back. But I think both, you know, Blackburn and the player and Liverpool themselves, I think they've all made the realisation that he's going to be at Liverpool start next season. 
Yeah, certainly something to look forward to. And it could be an interesting summer elsewhere. We'll, of course, have all of the updates across the Liverpool Echoes website and Blood Red, as ever, in all of the usual places when they come in. That, though, just about brings us to the end of today's podcast. We've plenty more content coming your way over the weekend and into next week. We've done a podcast looking at the under-21 Euros. That'll come out on Sunday. Ibrahim Kanate, as we said earlier, will be playing for France, probably on Monday night. For now, though, from myself, Matt Addison, from Ian Doyle, Joe Rimmer and David Lynch. Until next time here on the Blood Red channel, it's goodbye for now. This is the Blood Red podcast from the Liverpool Echo. This is the Blood Red podcast.